under the call for the uh, votes. They're finalizing their votes. I think we may go ahead and uh, start the committee and start the reports first. We may break in the middle if they get a chance to come here. We get a uh, forum, do our elections, and then finish up the quarterly report. First thing I'd like to do today is to thank uh, John Griffin of TCS and Riley Scott for the lunch. Really appreciate you guys providing it. Crazy day. Uh, those of you who may not know, I think John Griffin's with TCS. They're the group doing the uh, unemployment modernization. Thanks again for the lunch. Appreciate it. So going out of order, we'll switch our switch up and we'll go to uh, quarterly reports. Welcome, Jeff, our interim CEDO. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Jeff Max, and interim CEDO. Uh, we'll go quickly in the quarterly reports. Uh, I did have an introduction to hopefully address some of the newer members, but they're all up there voting, so I'll go over that here after the quarterly reports, um, kind of give an overview of the you know governance structures and things like that as well. Um, but with that, we'll start quarterly reports. So Alex Wong, our Chief Information Technology Architect, will start on the quarterly reports. Thank you, Jeff. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I'm Alex Wong, and I'm the Chief IT Architect for the State of Kansas. Oh, is it on? Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, so I'm here to present the um, Keto Quality Report, and I know there's a few new members of the committees. So I'm going to start the uh, presentation with some quick background and processes of how keto process flowed and how, uh, what is the purpose of keto. Keto is Kansas IT office and it is created by statute to monitor IT projects for the state. And it follows the ITAC policy 2500 for the criteria and the uh, elements that needs to be reported to the keto office. So as you can see, there's like uh, 11 steps within the process. And it started out with the four phases. You can see that the four phases listed here, planned it, approved, active, and completed. And you will see later on in the quarterly report that the projects are falling into those four different categories. So starting with planned uh, agency with a project that is estimated to be over 250,000 or more, we'll have to submit a uh, planned request for the project. And there's actually a House Bill 2077 introduced by Representative Hoffman that is going to change that threshold. So if that bill passed, then we will move from a uh, 250,000 threshold into a risk-based thresholds. So we will uh, come back with keto reportable project on high risk projects and go from there. Then after that, there is a uh, criteria of whether the project is over uh, a million, uh, less than a million, between a million and 10 million, and also over 10 million. We'll determine whether they need to do a feasibility study. Uh, some of those projects that we we'll talk about today will be one of those that have went through the feasibility study process. <coughs> after that is done, then uh, the uh, Reports will be sent to uh, the branch CETO. We have three branch CETO in the state, one representing one branch of the government. They will review the feasibility study if there is one and give approval to proceed if that's ready. Then the agency will start to prepare and submit the high-level project plan. That will be the first plan that you will see from the JCID committee. Uh, we have a proviso that is submitted for this fiscal year that has introduced this uh, advice and consult process where all the committee members in JCIT will see that high-level project plan first, and it's a period for the committee to provide any responses, feedback as needed before this can go into the branch CETO for approval. And then only after that approval is completed, then the agency can go into any procurement process. And that goes into the approval, the approved phrase, as you can see on step seven. So that's when the agency now can conduct any procurement activities and then start to uh, prepare and submit their detailed project plan, which will give us a lot more detail about the time frame, the technology that they're going to use, and the uh, architectural plan at that point as well. Once that is submitted, then you will be presented to the CITO again for their review and approval. And only after that we receive approval, the project can actually be executed. And now you'll be in the active stage, as you can see on step 10. So on uh, step 10, and all throughout this process, you will see later on on my quarterly report where I'm going to go through the summary of some of those new 
change the phase item, and I'm also going to talk about any active projects that is in the alert status. And once that is completed, then we will see step 11 is when the project is completed, close out, and we'll receive a uh, document called PEER, which is the post implementation evaluation report. And then that officially closed the process. So, any questions with that? Senator Tyson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the presentation. The um, steps that it sent to this committee, JCIT, do you wait for a review or do you, is it implied if you do not hear from us that it's a, approved? The current language in the proviso uh, did say that there's a seven candidates that we will have to wait until we have um, received any feedbacks. Once we receive any feedbacks, then there is a uh, motion to set up a meeting. And I think that goes through James uh, to have that meeting set up. And once that, we cannot move to the next stage until it is being met, until the meeting is convened. Okay, until members of JCIT is signed off. Correct. Okay, thank you. I, I see pros and cons for that. I appreciate the step. Okay, thank you. Senator, when we didn't get our bill through, we got the proviso through to get, get the heads up. It, it's really been working pretty good. You do have to check your email every few days, so particularly if you get married like some of them, but it's, it's a good thing. Thank you, Alex. All right, so uh, uh, we will update the list. Of, oh, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, that's my question, though, is I haven't replied to any of those. I haven't had the time or the resources to dig in, and I actually do that for a living, so I could be quite extensive on it if I had the time. And so by me not replying, you're assuming that's a approval or agreement. That's my question. That is correct. I think that I do, I do not believe this is an approval process or an advice and consult process. Okay. So we're going to have to be more meticulous so that you don't assume it's approval. If we have any okay. responses back in within the seven days, we will convene that steps written in the proviso. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so uh, we have some new members for JCID uh, this year, so we will also update the mailing list so new members will start to receive those uh, mailing package after the spinning. And this process right now is all conducted in uh, Excel documents and emails. And soon we are actually in the process of modernizing this process and eventually using ServiceNow as a tool that we're going to use for electronic submission, approval, and reporting system in the coming month. So more to come on that. Just giving a heads up to the committee. Moving to the next slide. Information that you can uh, gather through this process is all listed in a dashboard. There's a hyperlink up in this slide here that you can use. I also have the URL on the next slide, and that is a screenshot of the, what the dashboard looks like. Uh, you will see all the project that is in the keto process at the moment. And in every single one of those categories, there is a page and a doc column where you can click on those hyperlinks and you will bring you to the quality report and to the high level project plan or the detailed project plan, depending on which stage they are on. So information such as description, when is the planning, planning start date, end date, the cost of those uh, projects, the funding source, and also the most recent updated are all included in those quarterly report that you can find directly through this dashboard. And um, you see that there's also that uh, uh, status listed in the columns there. There's good standing, there's alert, but that's also a status called caution. And those status are uh, listed in the policy 2500 ITAC policy to determine what status they are in. So we look at uh, timeline, cost, task, and deliverables. And if any of those deviate from the initial plan by 10 to 20%, that will be a caution project. Anything more than 20%, it becomes alert project. And you will see some of those in my slides later. And as usual, uh, if any committee members uh, would like me to go through more about this dashboard or how to gather those information, please contact me directly and I'm more than happy to sit down with you to go through any of those items. Uh, if I might interject right now, I know we have new members who are going to be watching this or watching the YouTube of it. When you see something in caution status, that doesn't always mean it's a bad thing. Sometimes it may be they, they've seen something, they pull back and they've delayed and it's, they may be looking at recast or redoing. So just because it's in caution doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's a problem child. 
Absolutely. And same goes for alert status as well. And thanks for that clarification, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption. No, you're good. Thank you. 2023 between January to March of 2023. Uh, and for the presentation itself, uh, we are only going to go through any project that goes through a different stage. So any new planned, new approved, new active, and also all the project in the last status is what is going to be included in this presentation. Keep in mind that you can uh, get all the details and all the latest updates in uh, the quarterly report, and you can also ask for any specific project presentation from the agency to give you more information and more uh, insight into any IT projects. All right, so this quarter, we have a total of 68 projects that is currently tracking under Keto. Uh, starting from the, from my left corner, planted, there's 10 of those, and then the, it goes counterclockwise to the approved, we have 25 approved project, and then it goes into 23 active project and 10 completed project in this quarter. I'm going to start talking about the new planned project that is submitted in this quarter. There are two of them. And again, just going back to what I've saying in the process uh, workflow, this is where um, the agency, the entity, uh, know that something is going to come up and you'll be over the 250,000 threshold. So they are presenting the planned project plan determination and uh, is informing Kilo office that this is coming. So they are now preparing that high level project plan. And this will be the first document that JCIT is going to see from that advice and consult steps. So these two projects are the ones that is in this quarter. Pitt State University uh, have some of their networking infrastructure actually still in the steam tunnel. And now they are putting together a project to uh, uh, try to make, create dedicated conduit for those networking infrastructure and also create network redundancy at the same time. University of Kansas is also going through some infrastructure update in their uh, School of Engineering building. And those network switches are replacing to increase the bandwidth of their wireless network uh, for education and research purposes. Those are the two new projects. And the next slide, we're gonna go into the new approved projects. So these are the one that went through that, um, that cons advice and consult process also go through the first approval from CEDO, and they are now in the process of procurement and also uh, working on their detailed project plan. Um, do I need to stop? Pause for a second. Okay. No? Okay. I guess you We don't have enough. We'll continue to report on people who may have to pause. All right. Just let me know. And I will also move it faster so that I know that there's still uh, business in the floor. So I will, I will go a little bit brief and be high level. All right. So um, the Department of Administration is uh, moving forward on their, on their state employee health benefits plan data warehouse, and this is to replace some existing database and support system that is end of life. Uh, DCF is uh, going forward with the, uh, pre uh, the comprehensive child welfare information system, what we also call CWIS project, and this is a major project that's going to replace a lot of different major and minor system together. That will be about five to seven system that will be replaced uh, through this project. And the objective is to improve all the services provided through this uh, uh, effort. And this is the one that I mentioned earlier that there is a FSR. There's a feasibility study that's being done by a reputable organization. And this uh, FSR is going to go through uh, the review and approval for from CETO. And because this project is over $10 million, it also is required for uh, independent verification and validation, what we call IV and V process. Should I keep going? No. Okay. All right, so um, KCC, Kansas Corporation Commission, has their docking management system replace project getting started, replacing some of their end-of-life products. 
uh, Pitt State University is upgrading their phone system uh, so that they are replacing their 40 plus years old system so that they can continue to support and maintain their system. Department of Revenue is working on the Kansas Assessment Data Network that is actually going to modernize the entire process of collecting, analyzing, and reporting property as assessment data. And then uh, Department of Transportation has a project that is going to look at uh, a new system that is going to uh, replace the current system on the reinforced concrete box system. And uh, the goal is to provide allow vendors to provide design data and this constructual plans electronically uh, that will remove all the different uh, variety of files that's being reported today. And then uh, KU Med Center have three infrastructure projects. They're all um, planning to replace end of life and end of support infrastructure, uh, such as their network attached storage, the Nest, the, uh, the data center infrastructure, and also uh, uh, refreshing their wireless infrastructure as well. So those are the new approved projects. Moving forward are the active projects, and we are starting to break it down by the different branches of the government. So you can see that 19 uh, projects is from the executive branch and four projects is in from the region school. And there's currently no project from legislative or judicial branch that we're tracking in Quito. Uh, with those projects, the status of those projects, uh, 11 in good status. Three of them are in good status and they're considered as infrastructure project. Eight of them in alert, which I will go through each one of them later on. And then there's one recast project. Next up, we have new approved projects, uh, active projects, I'm sorry. So this is uh, the project that is now getting through the detailed project plan approved and now actually starting execution. And we have seven of those in this quarter. Department of Administration uh, have a, the, the claims data management system is starting to uh, in implementation with the end of pro project day of October, uh, August of 2023. Uh, DCF, uh, actually, I'm sorry, uh, KDATS, Department of uh, Aging and Disability Services State Hospital, is going through their uh, replacement of the 25 plus years old electronic health record and substance use disability system that is currently because of the age non compliance with federal requirements. And so they are working on that implementation. And the end, planned end day is November of this year. DCF, uh, with the SNAP program is trying to implementing a new web app to make it easier for the SNAP participant to comply with the web program requirements. And this project is starting and have a planned end day of June of this year. Next up is the uh, Kansas Children Cabinet and Trust Fund. And they are working to replace their regist registry system, workforce registry system. Uh, and this is a ARPA fund project that is going to end in December of 2023. Uh, next project is the Department of uh, Transportation. They are replacing their end of life electronic bridge inspection system that is currently completely in manual paper format. And they are now moving it into a more modernized and electronic system. And the planned end date for that is June of 2025. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you again. Um, I'm curious on KDADS, and maybe somebody, legislative research, could get this for us, but $2 million on this project, I'd like the history over the last 20 years, what they've done on projects. I know uh, a few years ago, quite a few years ago, they spent over $3 million on a project, and within two years, they were rewriting that project. So I'm kind of curious as to what's going on over in that agency. We'll note that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we actually have enough here for the to vote, and we really need to get probably back up to to um, on the floor. We're still on the floor, and I can't get hold of the rest of the members. So, if we could go ahead and vote, if that's okay, and um, and then Alex, uh, we can suspend your testimony, your presentation for a minute, and we'll take care of elections. First off, uh, Alan, did you have someone you wanted to recognize?
Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, just a brief moment here. I'd like to, uh, if with your permission, I'd like to recognize Terry Clark, our Director of Technical Services. Terry, stand up here. <laughs> Terry's provided the legislature with over 20 years of dedicated experience, and she's been a part of many IT teams during her service. She's been a critical uh, member in, in making sure that our infrastructure systems work properly and as our infrastructure project manager has completed many IT projects for the legislature. Over the years, Terry's reported to this committee and interacted with members of this committee many times, probably more than any of us can count. Uh, with that, to announce that uh, Terry is retiring April 1st of this year, <laughs> so she will be missed. And Mr. Chairman, I, with your permission, I'd request the committee join me in best wishes to Terry and her retirement adventures, please. Thank you for all your help. Appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We now need to turn our attention to while we have a quorum to elections. First up is election of the new chair, Senator Representative Curtis. Oh, thank you for the promotion. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I would like to place in nomination um, Representative Kyle Hoffman to serve as our chair. Second. Motion by Representative Curtis, seconded by Senator Pittman. Are there any further nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Passes unanimous. I'll turn it over to you unless you're new leaving. Well, we can finish the elections, then I'll leave. Yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, We'll now open it up for uh, nominations for vice chair, uh, Senator Tyson. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Mr. Chairman. I would nominate Senator Peterson as vice chairman. Okay, do I have a second? Second by Representative uh, Pittman. Senator Pittman. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> Any other nominations? <laughs> all right, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And carries. All right, and then for the um, yeah, the ranking it flips. Yeah. So who is it now? So, Senator Pittman. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate Representative Curtis to uh, take over as the ranking member of this committee. Do I have a second? Second. Second by uh, Senator Peterson. Any other nominations? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion carries. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, Representative Turner's here just in time. We're getting ready to leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if it's okay, I'm going to turn it back over to the vice chair and you can finish and we're going to go back up to the floor. So um, I'll be uh, getting with uh, Gary and, and uh, the rest of them will figure out meetings and go from there. So look forward to seeing you all uh, this summer. So. And for the new members, there was a presentation does show a little bit about the dashboards and the process. So the first part of it is worth watching. If you want to Go have back. some extra time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Apologize for that, Mr. Wong. We, we choose a day that we think is going to be quick and easy and it never works out. Thank you. Right, thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Yeah. Okay. I'll continue continue my presentation. Sorry. Thank you. All right. So I think I kind of stopped at uh, wildlife and park. So we have the active projects and we continue with uh, Kansas Department of Wildlife and Park. They are implementing the Smart Cop Record Management System, which is the same siege system that uh, uh, Kansas Highway Patrol is also implementing. So same vendor, just different instance, but they are sharing the same application from a uh, architectural perspective. And they will uh, provide uh, law enforcement record management, e-ticketing, mobile reporting, and interagency data sharing, and public information web portal once this project is completed. 
All right, moving forward to uh, KU Med Center. Uh, they are starting their effort on uh, the Y Area Network Data Center uh, implementation. This is a infrastructure project, and it is replacing the end of life or end of support networking equipment in those areas. And it is planned to finish in April of 2023. All right. Last slide I have is all the active project in alert and thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman, um, mentioning earlier that although they are in either caution or alert status, usually we are tracking with them to make sure that they are not at risk on uh, the project overall and they are working on either catching up with those uh, uh, criteria that they failed to uh, met in this quarter and understand uh, where they are in the project overall status. So. Starting with uh, both Department of uh, Children and Family and also KHP, um, both of them actually are working on a similar issue, which is a data migration issue. Uh, with this type of uh, re-performing re and uh, system upgrade, usually the old system's data might not match 100% with the new system, so they need to change the format and remap all the data, and usually that costs some unforeseen issue uh, until you get to the testing stage. And that's what happened to the, both of those projects. For the DCF project, they're still figuring out the solution. Uh, and once they have a better idea what the solution is, then they will provide a new timeline and will recast their plan at that point. For Highway Patrol, they are already moving forward. Um, they believe that they can have that migration uh, completed soon <coughs> and will provide that um, recast plan by the end of this month. Next up is OITS service, now ITBM implementation. This is the uh, digitalization and modernization effort that I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the keto process that we are going to start using ServiceNow as our electronic submission approval and reporting system. And it was in a lot of status before because we are running an assessment to make sure that we are not using too many customization into the, into the uh, platform, which avoids other agency to be able to use the same platform. So we have just got done with that assessment uh, and we are starting to uh, work on the project again this quarter. So you will see a recast plan on that, reflecting the new timeline in this quarter. The KBI uh, automated biometric identification system is delayed due to some priority changes on project resources. And uh, KBI steering committee has already approved that the, a recast needs to happen in January and then assign a uh, contract PM for the project as a whole. So KBI is planning to uh, submit a recast plan this month to rebaseline the whole project. KSUIT data center relocation. This is the, if you recall, there's a uh, uh, fire in the Hell Library over in K-State a few years ago, and this is part of that effort to relocate the data center. And uh, one part of the scope of that relocation is moving all the virtual servers out from the existing location. And uh, looking at the project right now, they feel like the scope needs to be changed, that the data center relocation will complete with the completion of all the networking and firewall connectivity and that they will take the server migration part as the oper daily operation task. So they are planning to submit a uh, uh, project scope change request this quarter and complete all the connectivity tasks before the end of the month. So we expect that, ta uh, that project to be completed in, the, in this quarter. Uh, next two projects are transportation, Department of Transportation project. First one is the uh, construction management system replacement. And uh, they are running into performance and usability issue when they're doing testing last quarter. And uh, that, that performance issue actually is uh, uh, preventing them to getting Federal Highway Administration certified. And so they're working with the vendor and other stakeholders to resolve this issue. And they have just implemented a fix last month uh, and so we are doing testing at the moment. And if this testing goes well, they will recast their project with a new timeline this month, uh, and we will have a new project end date uh, when that recast project is submitted. The next transportation project is related to the capital inventory system replacement. Uh, this one, they have some resourcing issue that they needed to uh, uh, resolve, and they did. Uh, they prioritized those resources to catch up with all the delayed tasks and deliverables. And so the agency believes that they are still on track to complete the project at the planned completion day of June of 2024. And the last project is also one of the ones that you see earlier with the new 
uh, active project is the Smart Cop rec uh, Record Management System from Wildlife and Park. They were a little bit behind on the uh, uh, task, but uh, as of uh, last month, they already completed eight of the nine and completed tasks. And again, they believe that uh, that does not affect the overall timeline to complete this project by November of this year. And that is all I have. I stand for any questions. Question, Senator Pittman. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wong. I appreciate it. Appreciate the updates on the uh, KSU data center relocation. Given that everything's virtualized, are they looking at options like going to our our server uh, platform out there with Unisys or whomever? The current plan is looking at uh, moving it to a uh, cloud-based, public cloud-based platform. So I do not believe that they are moving any uh, into the state data center. But I also know that they have some partnership with University of Kansas as well. So some of those might be moving to the KU data center. Thank you. Senator Tyson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you again. Um, that DCF project got my attention, $11 million. Could you give us a little bit of an overview? And um, I'm looking at the report on it. Hey, which project again? I'm sorry. Yeah, it was the DCF. Um, Child Support Services Replatforming. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Tom, are you able to provide a little bit more detail? I have the CIO from uh, DCF, Tom Pagano here, that he can provide a little bit more detail. Thank you, Tom. Sure. Yes, uh, I. Uh, what would you like to uh, me to elaborate on? Could you please state your name and who you're with? Sure. Sorry this. about that. Uh, Tom Bagano. I am uh, the CIO for DCF and KDADS. I started on uh, October last year. Senator Tyson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just am more curious. I guess I'm going to have to dig in on it. It seems like an extensive... Um, $11 million, I was just curious as to, uh, that seems like a pretty hefty lift for an IT project for the state. It, it, it is. Uh, let me try to elaborate. Uh, shortly after coming on board in October, uh, I saw that there were uh, issues with this project and issues with the vendor conduit and um, pulled my teams together to get an update. Uh, it, it was not going well. And so I had the vendor conduit uh, schedule face-to-face -face meeting in Topeka uh, late in November. We had a um, all-day session with them, which then led to a lengthy uh, one-month follow-up uh, process through the holidays. Um, through that process, we determined we needed uh, a number of things. Uh, one, one was a uh, new project management team. Uh, because the, the current team had not been um, cutting it uh, and, frankly, wasn't qualified to do the work, uh, in my opinion. So we uh, also sought out uh, a project manager on our side because ours had uh, left uh, the state. So uh, in the midst of all that, we examined the project and decided to do a recast of that project. And since November, December timeframe, that's what we've been doing. Uh, as of a few weeks ago, we have all the parts of this recast plan in place, with the exception of one, uh, one item. There's a very nagging, uh, as Alex said, uh, conversion issue between the mainframe and the mid-range uh, mid server environment in the cloud that we uh, have not been able to figure out with our resources, Microsoft's most senior resources, and resources from the company conduit. We are close to figuring that out, but in short, it's a very massive amount of data, about half a terabyte of data that uh, is in need of migration. And in doing that, we get these sort of timeouts across the network. It's very challenging. I've been personally involved in it. I think we're, we're nearing a solution to that, but until we have that nailed down, we don't feel good about putting a new date out there because it is an uncertainty. We hope to have that solved soon, though. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, and I would have thought that some of that would have been considered before the actual conversion started. And I, this number is just a big flag for me. Yes. 
on a state project. And then if you look below it, there's another project for another $2 million. So I, I think that there needs to be a deeper dive into what's going on over there in the technology. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. This has less to do with the actual alerts and things, but I know as an architect of our, uh, our looking across all of our agencies, uh, I've looked at it, this team's looked at different things, and I'm looking at each of these as spot solutions, and I'm encouraging you, and maybe this committee, when we gather together as a fuller group, we can discuss and maybe even make some recommendations of, of looking off into the five to 10 year horizon and taking a platform approach across each of these different state agencies and unifying some of these functions so that we can use common components across each of these agencies and we're not redoing the wheel over and over again especially when we talk about migrating from the mainframe and the as 400 systems and these type of systems we really need to be looking at an architecture and a framework that fits together with application and business logic that allows them to be configured for each of these different agencies um, I'm really hoping we can take a, 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 a very big look at this and say, how can we move forward as a state in the next five to 10 years as we fit these solutions together and come up with something like that with recommendations and frameworks? Yeah, thank, thank you for that comment. That's actually something that since I took the position last year, I've been starting to look into the current assessment of where we are today and what the future is going to look like, in the, like you said, the time frame between three to five years. And platforming is definitely something that we're looking at. And we are also looking at it from three different angles. We have the annual three-year project plan that we try to understand what agency are moving forward to three years ahead. And then we're also looking at the Keto project is where, where they know they have some funding, they're going to move forward on specific projects. And then also uh, we are working on the inventory, application inventory for existing application that is on board. So through all those three areas, we're trying to come up with what are the common business capability that we need to build from a platform perspective. So that when we start to see um, agency looking for those specific uh, business capability, we can point them to a specific platform that they can create a common uh, use a platform for all citizens of Kansas. And that is definitely something that we want to work on. So thanks for the recommendation. Any questions for Alex? See you then. Yes, I'd like to add with that uh, if possible. So again, thanks, sir, Mr. Chairman, Mayor Sve. I'd like to follow, follow up on that. And I know with, with the new members coming, in, I think it might be worthwhile if we do maybe in the next session kind of a deeper dive on, again, as I mentioned earlier, kind of organizational structures, governance structures, and relationships, and some of the efforts we are undertaking from an enterprise perspective with relation to agencies and, and how we are looking, currently looking three to five years and what strategies look like. We'd, we'd like to do a deeper dive on that and just kind of do a, a level setting with that as well if possible our next meeting with jcit it would be great and i know that you're probably you're still available for new members to check with if they have any questions on accessing the dashboard or yes sir senator tyson thank you mr chairman and i would add to make sure that when you're looking at those which is much appreciated that you're also looking at the rfp process and the sole sourcing um, i have concern over that too uh, one of the vendors just walked out uh, that RFP, understood, one of the worst written I've ever seen, and yep. I've understood. been doing this for a while. So, understood. thank yep. you, Mr. We're, we're constantly working on that. So, it's uh, not you guys. I'm not. Yeah, no, we know, we know yeah. what happened on that RFP. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Anything further? Not for me, sir. See, no further business. We are adjourned. Committee, don't forget to grab some food if there's still some left out. There.